Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today I'm going to show you a cool concept that I came up with. I don't know if it already exists but I thought about doing this on an airplane and I thought you know what if, what if I could take my Bernat Alizé Blanket Easy that you know that is the looping yarn and what if I started in the center and worked my way outward so I can make it as big as I want. Not only did I figure out how to do it as a square but I also figured out how to do it as a rectangle. Today's video is all about doing it as a square. It's really quite cool. So let's talk about it in more depth. So let's go over the concept. We're gonna start off in the center. You don't need any knitting needles, no crochet hook. You are gonna need a tapestry needle to hide in the loose ends at the end and you're also gonna need four clothespins. These are gonna come in handy so that you can keep an eye on the very corners of your project. So right in the very beginning it's gonna be a little bit of a slow pace because you are going to be switching off your clothespins uh, more frequently but as this gets out more and more that you change those clothespins less and less and therefore there's more knitting and less moving of a closed pin and you'll see that in just a moment. So we're gonna be working our way in a snail formation. There is no such thing as a finished round and when you're done this you can go as big as you need to. I only did two balls so that gave me a 32 inch by 32 inch baby blanket and of course you can go as big as you need. You're also going to notice that this yarn is really quite airy and it's really quite fluffy so it's very difficult to see through it which is the whole appeal to this. So you're gonna see these big balls on the yarn shelves just like you see. They're not the same as other brands that you may see. They're a lot more dense in the sense that it's really quite full but you can see it's also very light. So this product here is actually a lot of fun to work with and just two balls instant baby blanket just like so. So let's go over the middle concept to get yourself started and then we're gonna work our way around and we do have some goals for you in today's particular video. So in today's video I'm going to get you started on how to get started and get set up with these clothespins to make it easier for you to follow. I'm also going to show you how to fix mistakes so that if you accidentally twist any of these you can go back without having to take everything apart to fix the twist. I'm also going to show you how to be able to hide it in a loop so if you drop a loop in behind and you find it later I'm gonna show you how to hide that as well and I'm also gonna show you how to cast off and also weave in your uh, ends at the end. So that's our goals today. So without further do let's get ourselves started with our Bernat Alizé Blanket Easy and let's get started on this concept. So let's get yourself started and I want you to slide off your ball bin. You only need two balls for the baby uh, size. If you want to rip it you can but just slide it out and you're going to be operating the yarn from the outside of the ball working your way inward. So you'll notice that they are all a bunch of loops that are just dangling just like you see. So what we're going to do is that we're going to just take a closer look at this here so that you can understand the concept as you're being able to knit it. So when you look at this yarn in more detail you're going to notice that it's loops. This is a continuous uh, thread so what I want you to do is the first, the first two is that I want you to release these loops out. So if you grab your scissors and you go up and you just, just drag it right to the top of where it's joining. Just snip and that releases that loop. So you'll notice it doesn't break the yarn, it just breaks the loop and it only breaks that one loop. And I want you to break at least two loops before you begin. And this will be your starting strand that you're gonna hide in later. So what I notice here is that the loops always come right back down to the project or uh, to the main strand and then the next loop comes up. So you notice that there's really no distance between them so it keeps everything nice and compact when you're being able to uh, knit with this. So that really comes in handy and what you wanna do is just get the use uh, to the feel of this into your hands and it will all make sense. So we're going to get started today and I'm going to show you how to start off in the very beginning and then work our way outward. So to begin I want you to count the first four loops. So one, two, three, four. These are your first four corners of your square and I want you to take this long strand and I want you to tie it in between the fourth and the fifth so that it causes it to be uh, putting those four into a circle. So just pulling it through. Okay, so you see how it kinda looks like a butterfly at this moment. So those four and just tie it so that it ends up being a knot. And you can let that just straggler just fall to the back side of the project and we're gonna use a tapestry needle at the end of the project which I'll show you to on how to hide it. So the four loops here are now together to create that. So what I want you to do is grab a clothespin for each and put it on. Just So just put it on to the tip of each one of these loops. Every time you use a clothespin that represents a corner. So it's a lot easier for you to be able to look where these clothespins are versus having to count. 
So use your clothespins as your idea to be, uh, as your marker so that you can understand exactly where they are. So you should have the four turned into a circle here and then there should be a clothespin on each. Let's start moving around and let's begin. So let's get yourself set up. So I'm right handed so I want the yarn to coming in from the left hand side and I want to feed it. So I'm gonna be moving in a counterclockwise position. If you're left handed the yarn will be over here on the right hand side and you'll be moving in the, the clockwise. So position this so that this yarn is coming straight up and what I want to do is just tuck in that tail so that I don't see it. It's underneath. So I'm going to start off with my very first one. So whenever you do a corner and every time that there is a close pin you want to place in three loops. How you do that is that you grab one loop and just stack the other one two and three. Put three together and squish it in your hands and grab that one that has the, the close pin and release it from it because you know which one it is and then just feed those three through that one loop and there is your next corner of your next round. So once you have that done just pull the yarn so that it's out to the side here and splay these out. You'll notice one, two and three. And so where do you think the new corner is? It's on the middle one. So it's the second one. So replace the close pin on that one. Let's move up to your next one. So the next one is also a corner because it's the very starting. So stack the next three. If anywhere you're going to drop a loop it'll be when you're doing a corner. So stack the next three. So one, two and three. Okay and then grab the next one. So you just release it and go from the back side and pull it through to the front. You're always gonna pull from the back to the front and then splay it open. Okay and there is my three again. It's the middle one of the three. Okay let's rotate. See in the beginning there's a lot of rotating. So the next one has a close pin. So stack it. So one, two, three and then from the back to the front. So right at the beginning there's a lot of fussing with those close pins but as you get bigger you're going to notice that you're gonna have to do it less. Therefore you're a lot more knitting than you are you're actually um, moving these. So put that on the middle one of the grouping of three and then finally we're coming all the way around. So stack the next three. So one, two and three. Okay release that and coming from the back to the front. And then open it up, splay it and it's the middle one of the grouping of three. So you've now technically done all of them all the way around but I told you that we are going to go in a snail formation. So we're not actually finishing around. What we're just gonna do is we're gonna continue then to the first loop that's available. So the first one after you have all four done is this one here. It's the first one of that first group. Okay. So what you're gonna just do is grab the loop. Now when you grab the loop you're going to notice is that it goes up and down and then it's fastened and then up and down. So if you put a twist on it you'll see a twist. So you wanna be conscientious where the yarn, where, where it's not gonna be twisted. So do you see these? See it's going up and down there's no twist. So if I twist it first then put it through it'll have a twist. So what I want to be conscious of it is that I go from the front to the back without applying a twist but I'm gonna show you later on in this video how to correct a twist if you see it. So that one's by itself. So here's the next one. This is a corner. So this because it's a corner the next three in a row, sorry the next three loops. So one, two and three are gonna go through that loop. Just like that. Open, open it back up. See how I'm pulling the yarn over here? It's so that I can keep those in order. Okay so one, two and three and put it on the second one of the three. and just rotate your project. So this loop here is by itself because that's just the way that it is. Okay so I'm gonna apply a loop through there and the next one is by itself and I'm gonna apply a loop through that one and then I'm on a corner again. And I'm on a corner because I can see it. So just release it first and then stack. one two 
and three and then put it through that loop. And then splay it back open. So one, two and three and it's the second one of the three. And all you're just gonna do is keep on rotating around this project. Every time you see an empty loop just fill it in with a new loop except for the ones with the closed pin. You want to make sure that you are uh, putting three always in the ones with the closed pin. Okay, so the next one here is a corner. So stack it. So one, two, three, Okay, put those three through. Make sure that you can see all three before you move on. So pull all three through. You can see them. They're splayed out one, two, and three. And put your closed pin on. Okay. So moving to your next one. Just feed them through. So if there's no closed pin on it, it's just one loop. So I use this hand that's feeding on just to naturally get them to sit properly. Okay, so in my hand. So the next one is a corner. So the more you rotate around this, the further the corners get out from the edge. So you're just gonna put those through. Open it back up. And then move to my next loop that's available and start feeding through. So you're gonna notice that this will get bigger and bigger and you're gonna notice that the stitches will start organizing. It's about when you probably get about six inches big that you're gonna really notice your work is really gonna start to play itself out. You'll notice that the stitches will start lining up and uh, it's a really cool way to play. So the trick is, is not to twist any of your yarn. So that's all you need to do. You just need to go in a continuous circle and then every time that you hit a corner, you just have to apply th uh, three into there. Every now and then I would go back and pull on these and it will tighten up your stitches and you can really see your work really kind of materializing before your very eyes. So all you just need to do that as I said, just go around in a continuous circle but eventually what's gonna happen is that you are going to run out of this yarn. So what you wanna pay attention to is that if that ever happens to you, there's a really easy solution. So let's just purposely cut this yarn and just say, you know what, I'm switching to a yarn ball. If there's ever a loop that's damaged, you also do the same thing. So what I want you to do is just trim two loops open. So don't stitch those in and then trim two loops open on the other. And when I get to the end of this, you're gonna see that I used a smaller strand and I would, I would have told you that I would have showed you a different way. So this is what the different way is. Just cut two loops open and then use those and just tie them in a knot with each other. And make sure the knot comes so tight that those two loops are side by side. So don't leave any space between them because there is no space between them and just tie a direct knot into your loops or into your strand. And at the end, you're gonna use these to weave those in. So when you're going to continue to knit, uh, move it all the way around, you simply just, the next one is a, a corner and I can tell that because there is a closed pin. So if I was forever not paying attention to where my corners were, I would be constantly screwing up. So the closed pins were just a cheap idea just to be able to keep an eye on it. So you just can do that and it would be really quite, uh, it's really not hard to do. Once you get in the rhythm of this, it gets faster and faster and then you just keep on going. So you're going to notice that I'm about to change over to the yarn strand. Okay, so I'm just moving my way and I just changed my yarn. And so at the very end of this, I wanna take those stragglers that are hanging off the back and just tuck them in using a tapestry needle. So it's a really cool way to be able to change out your yarn without any really much waste and it's really quite fun and fabulous. So if I turn it over you'll see that the knot will be there and then I will just fix it. Just make sure that you turn it over once in a while. Make sure that there's no loops that are left behind. I also have a tutorial uh, like tutorial feature in this video to show you how to fix that just in case you do it. If you do leave, leave a loop behind it will technically be on a corner. 
So this is it and I'm going to meet you up then. I'm gonna show you some uh, corrections that you can do and then I'm also going to show you how to bind off at the end so that you can make it even better. So let's review on how to fix a twist. So for example, what you're seeing here, everything is perfect and everything is looking aligned. Do you see how the two follow up all the way to the top of the loop? Now if there was a twist to it, it would not look the same. So let's put a twist in here and let me show you how to fix that. So I'm back and I officially put in a twist here. So you can see that it doesn't kind of look right and you can happen to see this in a project if you're working along. So instead of taking everything apart, you can work straight down. So let me show you how to get there. So all you just need to do is just take this loop and just follow it straight up the path and the nice thing about this, you can do this at any point in this project and you just want to take all the loops out that exist to get to that twist. So here is the twisted one right here. So what you wanna do is untwist it and pull it out so it's not twisted and then you're just gonna take the strand and reapply it back up to the top. That's how easy that is. So instead of having to take apart all your work, you can just simply just go back to where it was and just bring it back to conclusion so it's the same all the way up. So what happens if you have a particular uh, loop that you skipped. Let's talk about that next. So when I turned it over, I noticed that I left this loop. So this is not intentional for the tutorial reason. I just happened to do that. Anytime that I did do that though, I ended up doing that close to a corner. So I noticed that. So what you have to turn this around once in a while, like pretty, just double check and make sure you get all the loops. Now instead of frogging it to catch that loop, what I can do is just kind of look at it and see where does this line up to go back up to the top. So you notice that it's facing in that direction. So I noticed that I have to go this way. So if it was facing this direction naturally, then I would go this direction. So what I want to do is just look at where I'm gonna follow. So just follow it straight up and start releasing out the loops all the way to that level. I find it easier just to look at it from the front side to undo the loops, just keeping an eye on where it's gonna go on the back side. So just going all the way down to where it is. So now that I'm all the way down, okay, so here's where I accidentally skipped it. So what I wanna do is put the two together just like normal. So just put it together. You're gonna treat them as one. So just turning it back over, push it two to the front side, okay, keep it together and now just redo your stitches using them both. So put this next one through both and then put the next one through the next and all the way back to the top. So now that I'm on the top, I can turn it over. My missing loop is now gone and let's turn it around and let's look at the front side. Okay, do you see where it is? It's right around here somewhere. So it may look a little askew but it's better than leaving an exposed loop in behind and uh, actually it looks pretty awesome once you just start shaping everything out and it's a great way to cheat the system without having to frog your work. So as we begin to do the bind off, I want you to just take a look at your project, make sure that there's no twisting or mistakes in it because now that we're gonna do the bind off is that it's gonna be permanently sealed into position. So make sure you do that first and then I'm gonna show you how to do the bind off next. What I've done is that I've gone through two balls and I'm just gonna leave the last section. I don't wanna turn the corner here because I don't have enough yarn to get around the corner. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna open up these loops. So let's just zoom in here and show you how that's done. So when I open them up, I wanna put my scissors and turn it upside down so it looks like horseshoes that are upside down. And if I glide in my scissors really carefully, I can catch the string that forms the loop. So it doesn't break the yarn at all, it just breaks the loop. And what I want to do is open up these final and I wanna use this as my final strand. If you were going to do it, um, you just need a minimum of three loops but because I didn't wanna turn a corner for the last one and it's just a personal preference, it's just I'm opening up everything that was left. So now that that's open, I wanna start my binding off. So what you want to do is you wanna work in the direction that is opposite to how you were putting it together. So for myself being right handed, I worked in a counterclockwise uh, position. If you're left handed, you were working in a clockwise. So because I'm right handed, I'm going to go total of clockwise. Okay, so I was, I was knitting counterclockwise. I'm gonna bind off counterclockwise and then left it's the opposite. So take the last one that you did and then take the new one and just form it up on the inside like this. Okay, so inside the loop and, and bend it over. Okay, and then grab the next one 
and I'm working counterclockwise because I, or sorry, I'm working clockwise because I'm right handed. And all I'm just going to do is that I'm gonna work all the way around putting the loops into each other. And now in the corners, I'm gonna get there in just a moment and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that. There's nothing special there. So I'm working my way to the corner. I still have my stitch marker in place with my clothespin and all I wanna do is just uh, be conscious of that and make sure that I get all of the loops when I'm turning the corner. So we're not adding anything to the corners any longer. We're just simply just gonna go around the corner. So you can remove this off. Make sure you expose all of your loops. You're gonna have three that are kind of untouched and you're gonna work those around feeding them into each other. So that gives you the extra that you need in order to turn a corner properly. Okay and then continue that around and that's it. So we'll go all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round and I'll show you how to finish off. So I'm coming back to where I had started and I've gone all the way around doing my bind off and just making sure I'm getting everything in. My last section here and my last loop. Okay. So you're noticing that you got a loop left over. So what you have to do is that you have to get a tapestry needle and one that will fit this yarn. This is nice and thick so you need a nice thick um, needle. I can feel the So just slide the yarn into the tapestry needle and what I want you to do is capture that loop okay and then pull it close okay and then sinking in underneath the, the stitch work capture it in. It's a nice yarn to be able to hide stuff and then going in the other direction so the idea is to get this to go back and forth inside the stitch work. You gotta go in a slightly different path each time to capture it in so it will not follow it on you. And you can pull on it and it's good to go. So then that knot is done. So what I want to do is that I want to go back through the afghan or the blanket and I have joined yarn so I just happen to turn it over. It happens to be right there. So this is where it's been tied. So what you wanna do is you wanna take that same tapestry needle and you wanna stay towards the back of the project and just uh, because my needle's so long I wanna sink it into my work first. Okay. And then just put the end or just do one at a time. It's just easier. Put the end through. And you, what you wanna do is you wanna drag it through that stitch work. You could have done this as you went as well. It do, you don't have to necessarily wait to the end. Okay, so I did one and the other one is right there. So again, I wanna just go in the other direction with the other one. Just sinking it in. Try not hitting that front side of the project. Just stay towards the back because then you won't mess with the, 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 the look of it. It's really quite thick yarn so just pull things through. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a long, you're gonna have a longer strand because by the time I gave you the advice you would have had a longer strand. So once you have it pulled through you can trim and trim. Ultimately if you can go back and forth three times it hides it even better and therefore your project's good to go. So.